Hello, I'm Tony DiMaria, the editor of Jack, here with the highlights of the December 18th issue. Trastezumab is a very effective monoclonal antibody in, in women who have breast cancer. However, although it's very effective against the breast cancer, it is associated with cardiotoxicity. And in fact, in studies that have been done to this point in time, there's been an absolute increase in heart failure of about 1.6 percent and an increase in left ventricular dysfunction of more than 7 percent absolute. However, most of these studies included a relatively younger group of women. And so we have a study in this issue of, of Jack that, that studied this monoclonal antibody, Herceptin, in older patients, uh, patients over the age of 67. And to do that, they uh, went and obtained data from the SEER Medicare-related database, and they analyzed three groups of patients, patients who are on Herceptin, patients who are on Herceptin plus uh, 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 an anthracycline uh, agent, and patients who were on neither. And what they found was that there was a significant increase in cardiotoxicity, either heart failure or left ventricular dysfunction, uh, with Herceptin, about a 14 percent increase. If the patients were on both Herceptin and an anthracycline, then in fact the increase in cardiotoxicity was 23 percent as opposed to patients who were on neither. So uh, this is uh, important information. Uh, uh, the number of patients with breast cancer who are receiving Herceptin in this day and age is progressively increasing. And so we can expect to see more cardiotoxicity, both heart failure and left ventricular dysfunction. These data indicate that this increase in cardiotoxicity is markedly greater in an elderly age group, a group of, of women over the age of 65. So it's important for us to be vigilant and number two, to continue looking for uh, prophylactic therapies that maybe can prevent the cardiotoxicity. The December 18th issue of Jack also contains the RIFLE study. Now this was a study in patients with acute STEMIs, ST segment elevation MIs, who are undergoing primary PCI. And it, what it consisted of was a comparison between radial artery access and femoral artery access for the percutaneous intervention. Now this was an Italian study and they prospectively randomized a thousand patients, 500 patients in each arm. They then went ahead and performed the procedure and the, the endpoint was 30, de, uh, 30 day MACE or as they called it uh, NACE, but major adverse cardiac events. And what they found was that the radial artery uh, access approach proved to be superior. In fact, uh, the number of major adverse events uh, in the patients who had radial artery access was only 13 percent as compared to 21 percent in the patients who had femoral artery access. Now interestingly enough, not only composite MACE was less with radial, but that included both mortality and bleeding at 30 days. Now there's some important caveats here in that uh, there was a very low use of bivalorudin, and of course that's associated with, with less bleeding. And in addition, there was some rescue PCI uh, in patients who'd already received lytics. Nevertheless, uh, uh, these data join an emerging database uh, suggesting that not only for elective PCI, but even for primary PCI in acute coronary syndrome, that radial uh, artery access has an advantage. An interesting study in this issue of Jack deals with the question of whether or not individuals who are physically fit will have a lesser increase 
a lesser level of biomarkers of myocardial damage, that's troponin, specifically troponin T, and of increased wall stress, that's NT pro BNP. And if they have a lesser level of biomarkers, will that translate into a lesser level of heart failure? And this is all predicated upon the observation that people who have higher levels of troponin and, and NT pro BNP have a higher odds ratio of developing heart failure over a period of time. So the investigators in this study went to the uh, cardiovascular health uh, uh, study and uh, used that database to extract uh, a group of people who were followed over a period of two to three years. And during that two to three year period, they tracked the increase in both troponin and NT pro BNP. And what they found was that people who are physically active, in good shape, highly trained, had a lesser increase in troponin and, and BNP over the period of follow-up. And in fact, that dramatically uh, decreased their risk of developing heart failure. So in, interesting data here on, on a number of, of accounts. One, some confirmation that, in fact, biomarkers can predict risk for heart failure, and perhaps even more importantly than that, that exercise conditioning, in fact, can blunt an increase in, in biomarkers, and that will be associated with a reduced risk of heart failure. So an interesting group of, of studies highlighted in the December 18th issue of Jack. I sure hope you enjoy reading it. <laughs>